such frustration or lack of self-control. I want you to kill me and drag me under. I want to live no more. One who doesn't care is one who shouldn't be. I try to hide myself from what is wrong for me. For me. I want to taste dirty, a stinging pistol in my mouth on my tongue. I want you to scrape me from the walls and go crazy like you made me one who doesn't care is one who shouldn't be try to hide myself from what is wrong for me one who doesn't care is one who shouldn't be I try to hide myself from what is wrong for me. For me. so special you have the talent to make me feel like dirt yeah you use your talent to drag me under and cover me with dirt one who doesn't care is one who shouldn't be. Try to hide myself from what is wrong for me. One who doesn't care is one who shouldn't be. I try to hide myself from what is wrong for me. For me. Welcome to Not Safe for Work, Runeterra. It is I, your host, Gravity Groove. And uh, that was Dirt by Allison Chains. Uh, I actually used my proper recording studio microphone for that take. Um, you may wonder why I may be in stereo now and I was in mono before. Uh, whenever you're recording professional audio, you want to be recording in mono. Uh, almost always when you're recording from one source, you just want to be recording in mono and then you can splice it to stereo or mix it or change how it pans left to right when you're, when you're in editing. Uh, but for the purposes of, uh, you know, just keeping things going relatively smoothly. I've just left the original uh, audio as it is mastered. Uh, kind of like I do this show, I don't curate my voice either. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people don't know that when you stand and sing, you have full access to your diaphragm. And when you're sitting, you're compressing it so much just by the nature of, of how sitting is. Uh, that you probably have like 30, maybe 40% of your diaphragm strength. So you really can't sing uh, as accurately, as powerfully, as dynamically as you can when you're standing. So uh, 
for some songs that I really, really enjoy and that I feel like I need to represent with my full voice, it's always better to use the pro equipment uh, rather than the, uh, the little Blue Yeti here. The Blue Yeti is great for, for talking and for how omnidirectional it is, but if you're going to record stuff that you're actually meaning to like, you know, present music with, uh, you, you can't really go wrong with the, uh, the five or six hundred dollar microphone here. You gotta use the good dynamic shit. It's actually the microphone they use to record Thriller. Not the microphone, but the same type of microphone. I digress. Today we're going to be recording some plays of the funk. Uh, I've always liked this deck. Um, this is something I have always uh, enjoyed piloting, and it's a swim innovation. Uh, he brought this to. Dang, I got like super itchy nose. He brought this to Rivals, um, which I believe he won, and it's one of the weirder looking um, deep lists. It's not all in like the traditional deep lists are, it only even has one salvage in it. But it really hedges. Uh, across a lot of different elements, like running, jo uh, not jaw hunters, uh, petty officers, to protect yourself from just auto losing to very aggressive strategies by having something that makes two bodies. Um, all of the uh, toads, of course, and wanderers and vile feasts, but fading memories as well, which you can occasionally do neat stuff like copy an enemy shark with, <laughs> which I've done. It's funny. Uh, copy Jowl Hunters to get uh, essentially a free kill on your attack, plus get a free fish. Um, this leans more heavily on Maokai as a win condition than any other version of this deck. Because we run two Vengeance and two Ruination. So because we have three Grasp, two Vengeance, two Ruination, and pretty solid tools to weather the, the early game, we can usually drag people to the late game, and if we can get Maokai before they kill us, we can usually just dirtle for four turns and they'll lose. Um, there's a single Nautilus in here because I like the option to get back all of our tossed cards so that we, when we are on the Maokai plan, we're always going to know we have a Nautilus lurking in the deck somewhere that we can use to get all of our tossed cards back so that we're not in danger of milling. Uh, one ship recorder, which is just, this card is just bonkers insane. Uh, and maybe next time we play this, this archetype on, on the show, we will go for the uh, all-in version that doesn't run uh, Ruinations and runs the two or three Abyssials and Lower the Depths and all that good shit. But for now... Uh, but for now... Take your marks. Set... We haven't made a lot of progress from uh, our last video here. Went on, a nice, went on a nice losing streak. This is one of the tougher matchups. They come out very, very aggressive with uh, turn one and two pirates. We can be in definite trouble. It gives us a bunch of ways to clear Ezreal. We're really just hoping to fade turn one pirate. This is a matchup where Withering Whale is, is a lot better uh, than a lot of our other matchups because they do have a lot of good value in the uh, the two one that we can get with it. Get that trash! Get that trash! <laughs> Really good that they don't have early plays. Well, that's a dead card. Um, if we play Hunters, they're almost certainly just going to make it rain. Uh, we could have just passed there to see if they would play something that we could potentially eat, but I kind of suspected that they wouldn't. A lot of dead cards here. Yeah, you don't want to class me. Uh, 
I guess now we're playing this just because I feel like we kind of have to. This lack of tempo is pretty disappointing. Do we have to? Makes it rain, he only gets one one target for Ezreal. Ooh, Maokai. This is probably fresh here. Yep, 10 out of 10. Called that one. If we do this, he's almost certainly going to Mystic Shot Thresh, right? There's plenty of killing left. Ouch. and if you see the next shot, that's fine. That's great. We just used three cards to kill my Thresh. It's kind of fucking great. Oh, and we got Maokai and a Dredge Dredger follow-up. Awesome. against the deep deck. The rot must be cut away. You are not wanted here, intruder. Like that's ever stopped me. Blue as the serpentine. Questionable. Shots to make a range. Wow. Not gonna lie, that's pretty bad for us. A game. Go on then. Watch, Watch the, the ball, ball, folks. That answers to both my creatures. We got no progress on protecting ourselves. That's not great. And now we got the Riptide Rex. And they call me a shark. Wow. His draw was just about perfect. Um, I don't really know that we have any good options now other than Ruination.
just only got two kill. cards. We're gonna try to kill that as quickly as possible. He's only got two cards. Hopefully he doesn't have like chump wump here. Chump wump is the worst case scenario. Nailed it. Vessel small, but she ain't lacking courage. Okay, so we punted that one apparently because I thought they would be able to do something that we would be able to react to and all of their spells were burst. So we lost. Okay. My fading memories and their warning shot. Last two cards. That was pretty unlucky too, but I definitely punted that. As soon as he fired off this big shot, I should have grasped, but I held it. This is uh, War Mothers, I believe. Only thing that matters here is trying to get Maokai to kill them. Because their late game is considerably more powerful than ours. Man, that loss tilted me. Thought we had that game. This should be a favorable matchup because we have uh, Devourers that potentially one shot uh, both Tridemir and uh, Aniva. Anivia. Survey says Avalanche. That's what we can do about it, folks. Aristocrat, what are we doing here? You got one mana, why are you roping me? Okay. I guess we're wasting my time. recognizes that Maokai is our path to victory. And 
now we get missed call. Um. Toughness. Um, so we swing all of these, sacking this, so that we can potentially devour our next turn. I don't know that we have a better play than that. I mean, it's not our oh, side phase. Do but, you, you want know. to get back to work? <laughs> Vessel small, but she ain't lacking courage. Him have a vial or withering well. No. Um, this puts us to deep. Points to not being able to block. Very interactive. Much fun. So, 10 out of 10, he's just going to play this again. So, we got to just swing here. can the deck be? So we're dead to atrocity. Um, this is just going to die next turn, be full swing, and they, they're they dead? If I'm seeing this board correctly? Precious so we just let it go. <clears throat> oh man, if that was something else. Um, 
So we don't just want to get hit with ruination next turn, so... That combo is fucking an option. Commander into uh, cloning it for zero mana. That is super obnoxious. That's pretty sweet. I think we almost have enough Teemos now for uh, the Teemos Ishwani deck. That I'm told is quite bad, but probably fun. Cool. Up for like some Bannerman variations now, too. Nice haul there. All right, let's try to get funky one more time. Lost a close one where we could have won, but we didn't understand that burst would deny us any responses. I don't think I've seen too many curtains this morning before. Uh, So this is going to play out similar to Ash Sizwani, I assume. So I think this draw is pretty good. Life gain, life gain, knockback. And blockers, awesome. No Omen Hawk. Sacrilege. How dare you sell you the name oh, of the <laughs> Um... Guess we're blocking then. Delicious. Now that it's only one damage, happy to block. So happy to block. Is that all? Ooh, they did get to trigger their champions. What are we doing with zero mana? With one mana. What are we doing? So this is going to be a burn deck. We've got... <laughs> I guess we go Petty Officer. Stole the Russians! Shackle the prisoners! I mean, it could have been worse than that. I, I was hoping for something with two power so we could swing. I'll try anyone once. Yeah. Gross. I love a taste of the action. Get barnacle! Just leave me alone! So you're gonna transfuse to the two three.
That's fair. Um, do we care enough to do this? I don't think we do. Not that big a deal. Yet. I will tend this garden. We got a shark chariot. <laughs> we got a shark chariot. So what does he have that could kill Maokai here? Um, culling? He could have culling. Maybe we should have held Maokai until next turn. We could have potentially protected it with, uh, of with, with Miscall. Yeah, we definitely should have. If he gets, if he callings me here, it's my fault. Wow. Lucked out on that front. Um, this leaves us enough. Protect our grove. Good swain here. Get a good look at you. Okay. Interesting. Oh, he has shenanigans an awful lot to keep these, uh, these crimson active for as long as humanly possible. Not sure I see the point. The winter's claw strikes. Okay, so since we can't really play a profitable missed call this turn, I think we just put out some more blocking butts. to have a, uh, a vengeance here, but since we don't, play Petty Officer, do we even, do we just not block? This is a weird spot. I learned patience. Just wanting this early. Okay, that works. So we just get to nail us. I'm sorry. Then we get to do this. He does have the opportunity to hit us with removal to lessen our chances of getting back Maokai. Which, if he's smart, he will. Like, you probably killed the petty officer or the pirate. Yep. Gives us a 50-50 chance to not get what we want. Your 
worth. the wrong decision my friend let's wait until after because he could have a uh, a fury Swanee's almost leveled One, two, three, four, five. Everything he's played has been a fucking protection trick. It's better to be lucky than good, I guess. And this asshole certainly is lucky. to kill him this turn, we're just going to be dead next turn. Across the seas and into battle! Sure. Now it, now it literally doesn't matter what we do. Yeah, now it literally doesn't matter what we do. space to make the thing we need. Don't even have space to make the thing we need. Protect our growth! Curious, you think we'd seek to a seven thirteen swain? Yeah, okay. Leave 
this with three blockers. Um, although we can't really block anything profitably. anything profitably. Does anything save us? Maybe a vengeance? And so life springs anew! Must be nice to be lucky. Back to our losing ways, I guess. The third fucking transfusion. Take heart in a deck that doesn't run Braum. Like, a trick for every fucking turn of the game until he gets to the end game, and then his remaining three cards are all end game cards. <laughs> like, fucking. Swain, Dusk Raider, and Sejuani. Like,. What the fuck am I supposed to do about that? Okay, so we've got uh, scouts. More than anything, we just want to try to keep them small, if at all possible. Of our gel hunters that came in there. Bad, 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 and bad with bad inside of bad. I've got your back. Protect and strike. Up a withering whale would be good. You'll fight or you'll swim. Oh, that's a bad hit. Croak if you work, burn if you don't.
you picked the losing side! He has a rally here that would be okay for him. show you the sights of Bilgewater. The sights are fine. The smells, yeah, on the other hand. that's pretty unpleasant. Protect our growth! Sick of that trick. Real battle. You defile the grove. Fucking irritating. Oh, 
people in masters I've seen it on the YouTubes but I don't know how you get there without playing 25 hours a day I really don't <laughs> oh god I don't think I'm that bad a player I'm definitely not the best player but what does your win rate got to be like 95% to get on a fucking platinum oh my god I think I like the uh, the, the magic arena system better where after every um, five wins, when you go up one one section, you have one free loss to take that doesn't subtract subtract from your uh, your rating. So essentially, you can go uh, uh, one loss for every four wins or every three wins or something in Magic. Being like a 75% win rate is is still excellent, still way above average, and definitely worth ranking up. But in this game, you just have to play 800 million games at like a 55% or 60% win rate to get traction, and it feels like you're going nowhere. It uh, they definitely need to look at how they do rankings in this game because it doesn't it doesn't feel rewarding. It doesn't feel like there's any real progression. Uh, if anything, it feels stagnant and frustrating. Um, unless you're a person who plays this eight hours a day. And currently, like, there's just not a, a reward for it. There's not a tournament structure or anything that getting to those ranks really lends you other than street cred, which, you know, as I said, is largely getting credit for just playing eight hours a day. Eh, you know, maybe things will improve. I hope they will. Uh, I hope they'll look at this system in the future so that maybe they can improve upon it. Until then... Uh, I feel like we had some pretty decent games today. We uh, learned a lesson about Ezreal, and that is always fucking play the life gain spell the goddamn second you can, you stupid fucking idiot. It's me. I'm the... I'm the, I'm the idiot. And, uh... <laughs> So this deck is fairly reasonable still, but maybe we want to add a Withering Whale because that does still seem like it has a lot of utility. And we could cut a Grasp for a Withering Whale, or we could cut a Ruination for a Withering Whale. There are options. We'll toy around with it. Until then, however... I have been Gravity Group for Not Safe for Work Terra. I hope you've enjoyed the show today. If you have, please feel free to like, subscribe, say hello, hug a cactus. And uh, if you didn't like, what are you doing here, man? It's the end of the video. Are you into that sort of thing? Okay, I'm not going to judge. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate your time. There's a lot of cool stuff out there, and it's cool that you decided to spend some of your time here with me. And once again, for Not Safe for Work Runeterra, I have to say I will see you, boom, later. Look at that massive thumb. <laughs>